Hey, I'm Uwe, and I'm presenting my recent work, a large-scale multilingual study of visual constraints on linguistic selection of descriptions. This is a joint work with Leah Furman, Gabi Stanowski, and Omriya Bent. Let's start with an example. Say we want to describe the following image. We can say an adult throwing a child in the air, but also a child thrown in the air. Both are correct, but one of them would be preferred by most English speakers, probably the first one in this case. But what about this image? You probably wouldn't describe it by an adult throwing a child in the air, even though clearly that's exactly what happens here. Intuitively, this is a more passive image, and most people would prefer a child thrown in the air. In this study, we ask whether visual features constrain linguistic choices of descriptions. More concretely, given only images, can we predict the linguistic phenomena that will be expressed in the corresponding descriptions? Previous studies investigated these questions by experimenting on humans. Participants were shown several images of the same scene with different conditions. For example, by cropping the, some of the scenes, uh, like here on the right, on these images. And uh, the, next, the participants were asked to describe the image, and the linguistic properties of the description were then manually analyzed. For example, this study showed that when cropping the agent, the C condition here, participants were more likely to produce intransitive sentences. There are several issues with these studies. First, they're very small, both because the scenes are handcrafted and the notation of linguistic properties is manual. Second, the images being handcrafted are not natural images. Third, because of their small scale, they usually focus on a single language and property. Now, we could bridge these gaps if only we had a large corpora of descriptions of natural scenes. Well, we do. There are uh, many image caption datasets out there in different languages that can be exploited for this exact purpose. To exploit the scale of these datasets, we developed automatic tools for annotation of these five linguistic properties. Use of normal expressions, use of negation, use of passive voice, transitivity of the main verb, and use of verbal versus nominal constructions. Here are all the datasets that we used. As you can see on the right, here. The number of images in our studies is approximately 600,000, and the number of captions is 3 million. An important note is that we only include datasets with captions generated by native speakers and not translated from English. To determine whether vision constraints each of the properties, we trained visual classifiers to predict, given an image, whether this property would be expressed in its descriptions. We start by annotating for each image whether it's a positive or negative sample, as you can see here. That is, whether its description expresses that property. Next, we train an SVM classifier that, given the embedding of the image generated by a pre-trained visual encoder, predicts if the description would express the property. And finally, we test this classifier on held out data. If the classifier performs significantly better than chance level, the expression of this property is correlated with visual features. We test four methods for pre-training the visual encoder, with varying levels of supervision. First, we initialize the visual encoder randomly, that is, without any pre-training. We treat this method as a lower bound. Next, we use MOCO, a self-supervised pre-training method based only on visual signals. Third, we use ImageNet pre-training, where the encoder is trained to predict classes of images in a supervised setting. And after pre-training, the classification head is discarded. Finally, we use CLIP, a multimodal self-supervised pre-training method, trained to project both images and corresponding captions to similar vectors in a joint space. This method is trained with explicit textual inputs, and we treat it as, a as an upper bound. First, we combine the data from all languages and train the classifier as a multilingual classifier. Here are the results for all pre-training methods and properties. In all the cells, chance level is 50. For all properties, all the pre-training methods except none achieved above chance level performance. In all pre-training methods, the use of numeral expressions, highlighted in green, was predicted most accurately. The hardest property to predict was negation, highlighted in red, probably because negation in image captions is a rare phenomenon. As expected, none was the lowest scoring pre-training method, while clip was the highest. Next, we focus on MOCO pre-training because there is no textual supervision used in it. Here are the results for all languages and properties. 
you can see that in almost all cases the performance is above chance level. As before, in all languages the use of numeral expressions, highlighted in green, was predicted most accurately. The hardest property to predict was negation in German, highlighted in red. For Japanese, we couldn't get high quality annotation for all properties except for numerals, so we tested only on numerals. Now, MSCOCO, one of the datasets we used, contains additional annotation for each image of the classes of objects and the location of these objects by drawing a bounding box for each object. We use these annotations to study the highest scoring property in numeral expressions. First, we ask which classes are most likely to be described using numerals. For each class, we collect all the images with instances of this class and compute the percentage of images that were described using a numeral expression. That's the y-axis in this plot. We do so for the three languages of MS Coco, English, Chinese, and Japanese. For English, we can see that the classes that were most commonly described using numerals are animals, bear, giraffe, cat, etc. For Chinese, we see the same pattern, as well as for Japanese. This result supports the hypothesis that images containing animals are most likely to be described using numeral expressions across different languages. Another question that was studied with human experiments is the number of objects that humans tend to count. Above a certain number, humans would start using quantifiers such as some or many. This number was shown to be four in different studies. Here we collected for each integer x all the images with x objects in it and computed the percentage of images described using numerals. We draw this percentage, the y-axis, as a function of the number of objects, the x-axis for each language in, in solid line, and the same for quantifiers in dashed line. Up to 4, the use of numerals sharply increases, while later it gradually decreases, confirming previous small-scale studies. The use of quantifiers, the ones that are in dashed line, uh, increases steadily. Next, we want to test whether different languages agree on which images should be described using numerals. So, we use the multilingual datasets MS Coco and Flickr. For each image, we compute the percentage of captions describing this image using numerals. For example, here we have three captions, two of which use numerals, so we write, write down 0 0.6666. Next, we put all these numbers in a list for each language. This is for English, and this is for German. Finally, we compute the person correlation of these lists. The common practice is that a correlation higher than 0 0.5 is considered high. Here are the results. As you can see, the correlation is high in both datasets for all language pairs. Let me remind you that the captions are not translated, so the non-English annotators were not influenced by the English captions. We also studied the differences between languages by finding images that were described using numerals by different languages, but the numeral value was different in each language. We find two main reasons for such differences. First, different languages tend to group or split participants based on gender, a man and two women versus three people. Rule, a dog chasing another dog versus two dogs running. Or age, here, while English and German annotators describe this image by saying an adult and two kids, Chinese annotators use three people. The second reason is that the datasets were originally built for English speakers and include images that show scenes more related to the American culture. For example, most sport images are of baseball and basketball that English speakers tend to describe with many details, commonly mentioning the player's shirt number, as in the first caption here while other languages tend to just say something like two men are playing basketball. We've shown that linguistic properties are correlated with visual features, most notably for the use of numerals. This new suggest suggested methodology can be used as an exploration tool for identifying interesting phenomena, such as the fact that animals are most commonly described using numerals, which was not shown in previous studies to our best knowledge. Next, additional small-scale but controlled experiments can look into these ideas. Thank you.